I'm here with Phil Kotzbach, and you are a meteorologist at Colorado State University. Um, and with the start of hurricane season, you, you have done the forecast for this year, am I right? That's correct, yes. We put out our first seasonal forecast back in April. We just updated it a few days ago. Um, we are calling for a little bit of an above normal hurricane season this year. We're calling for a total of 18 named storms. That includes Anna, which formed a couple of weeks ago. Of those 18 storms, eight becoming hurricanes, and of those eight, four becoming major category three, four, five hurricanes. Those are hurricanes with winds of 111 miles per hour or greater. It's a little above the average season, which is about 14 storms, seven hurricanes, and three major hurricanes, but not as many as what we had last year. Yeah. <laughs> well, with this higher than average year, we can expect that there's going to be a lot of devastation potentially. So. What do you, in your experience, find that people do not think about um, in a hurricane situation? What do you think people need to be preparing for this, this hurricane season? Yeah, so when it comes to um, hurricane activity, you know, with these seasonal forecasts, we can't say, you know, how many of the, even if our forecast is perfect and we get eight hurricanes, we can't say how many of these storms are going to make landfall. And obviously, in general, more active seasons have more landfall in hurricanes, but even in a quieter season, you can still have a significant hurricane it can cause very significant levels of damage. So I think really the time is now to be prepared to know what you're going to do if a storm does threaten because, you know, you don't want to be doing these things at the, at the super at the last minute. So, like, my mom lives on the east coast of Florida, and she already has, like, her storm shutters that she can deploy in, like, an hour if there's an impending storm. It's not something you want to be running out at the last possible minute to, to, to do things. So now is really the time to kind of have your preparation plans, you know, refresh your hurricanes, preparedness kits, get everything ready such that if one of these storms does threaten your area, that you're ready to go. Um, and also basically know what you're going to do. Know if, um, so kind of the idea is in general you want to shelter, basically you hide from the wind and you run from the water. Um, so basically most well-built houses can survive most kinds of winds you get in a hurricane, but it's the water. If the storm surges, six feet and you live at four feet above sea level, you do not want to be there when that hurricane hits. So in the event of that, you want to have a plan to evacuate if need be before the time comes where there's, there's no gas to get out of the state or out of the impact area. So um, it, is that one of, have you ever been um, in a hurricane situation where people couldn't get out but they needed to? Is that something that? So. I have not personally been in a hurricane situation where we could not get out. Um, I grew up in Massachusetts, so we went through Hurricane Gloria and Hurricane Bob when I was growing up. Um, both of those we sheltered in place. Uh, but one, with Hurricane Bob, we had a big tree come down, and it missed our roof by about a foot. Uh, I'm sorry. It missed our roof by about 10 feet. So it was extremely close to having a roof taken out. Um, so when, you know, Now's a good time, too, to make sure you know, trim the trees near your house, such that if you have falling limbs and stuff, that they're not falling on top of your roof. Uh, we learned that lesson very, thankfully, OK, but it was very, very close. Right. Yeah. So what you're saying, basically, is have a plan. Have a plan for food, definitely shelter. And make sure your shelter is safe from tree limbs. There was um, our neighbor um, in Hurricane Irma, I think it was, had a tree with the same situation where it wasn't trimmed. Um, and it took out the power for a very long time. So food was an issue. There's all kinds of things that we need to prepare for. Really, we need to, what is your strongest thing in your experience with, um, with hurricanes? What is the strongest thing that you feel like people don't think about? Yeah, I mean, I think it's, some of it is just, you know, you may be without things that you kind of take for granted, like cell phone service and, you know, refrigeration, things like that, you know, that are nice things about modern technology, but that, you know, if, you, if you're without power for a week, you know, do you have shelf-stable food, shelf-stable, obviously water, but bottled water, things that, you know, like, I always think about water, like, you know, you think, oh, you just turn the tap on, I have water I can drink, but you may not have that for, you know, even up to a week or even longer in certain situations. So it's important to make sure that you can be, you know, survive for a week to two weeks without, yeah. you know, having the, the normal kind of niceties that we kind of take for granted. Yes. You mentioned water purification. That's another thing that we hadn't thought about um, a few years ago. And it turned out we had to boil it because the water um, in our city got contaminated because um, there wasn't enough pressure to keep it out or something like that. <laughs> there, there was a lot of issues with that. So water purification, um, 
And you were talking about electricity for refrigerators and stuff. When you're out after a hurricane, it gets really hot and humid the, the second day after. Um, so just those luxuries that we don't think about, like a, a cube of ice in your drink afterwards, that would be nice. And that brings us to another point, um, power. To charge up your phones, like you mentioned, or to have your refrigerator working. Um, what do you feel like is the best way, in your experience, to have self-sufficiency and power? Well, I mean, it, it kind of depends on where you're living. Obviously, um, if you have the, um, so last year we lived in California, and they cut the power because they were worried about fires, and they said use a generator. Well, that's great if you have enough space for a generator. We lived in a townhouse that didn't have enough space for a generator. So in that case, you're, you know, we basically charged up um, you can get like these micro things. So you basically can charge up your your you know your your um, phones. your phones and your your phone yeah and everything else. Basically, what we did is took all the water bottles we had, froze all of them the day before the power went out, and just packed the freezer full of frozen water bottles, and the stuff lasted for two or three days till the power came back. Just basically pack everything full of as much frozen stuff as you can to keep all the other stuff good to go. And then you know if stuff starts to go, then you just if you have the auxiliary power, then you can, you know, grill it up or whatever and then, you know, have a big party. But in general, yeah, I mean, you want to have, um, you know, if you can have a generator, that's great. But also, too, if you're going to have a generator, make sure you know how to use it before or right after the hurricane because there's a lot of deaths that come afterwards because of people either not properly exhausting the generator or not really knowing exactly how to use it. So, you know, make sure you know how to use it before the, before the time comes. So uh, we were just talking about food and generators. So put that together. Um, and you, there was um, our neighbors, and after Hurricane Irma, had a generator. They were all good for their food because their freezer was able to stay cool and it didn't make their stuff go to waste. But everybody in the neighborhood was hearing the generator, smelling the exhaust, and they, it started to cause problems because they knew um, where the people were. <laughs> we had some neighbors, they didn't have anything. They saw that others did. Um, so in the end, yeah, um, if you're going to have a generator, I would say you definitely need to take those precautions. But there's, there also needs to be a backup, um, in my experience. Um, so solar power, um, cooking your food, um, sun oven, stuff like that. Um, or even, have you ever used um, freeze dried? Mm -hmm. Yeah, those, those are other things, yeah. too. Those are things that you need to have ahead of time. So that's more preparation that really needs to be to be considered before even hurricane season starts, if you can. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, I, I've done a ton of backpacking, and I think I kind of treat hurricanes kind of like I treat a backpacking trip. Like, what would you take? What, how are you going to survive for a few days? Especially if I, I try to travel pretty light, so if someone's even without a stove, like, what can I eat for three or four days that's tolerable that'll get me through? Yeah. Um, and also, too, like, backpacking to have multiple ways of filtering water. Um, besides, even if you lose power, you have other, there's, there's pumps and there's, um, tablets and things you can do to treat water because really that's the most critical thing is you obviously don't want to be drinking contaminated yeah. water and there's a lot of really nice and some actually pretty reasonable um, devices you can use to, to, to treat water to make sure that you know you're drinking water that's safe. Yeah so whether it's a way to boil water mm -hmm. um, or if it's a way to use a filter what all that kind of stuff that's more preparation the time to do it is now because hurricane season is just starting and obviously um, you've predicted that there's going to be a lot of hurricanes potentially this year. Um, so if you don't have anything else to add, I think that uh, pretty much covers you need to get out now. <laughs> you definitely need to be prepared for this coming hurricane season because it, hopefully it'll be calm, but you, I think you know what you're talking about when it comes to <laughs> it's probably going to be a major year. Yeah, there's definitely that potential. And again, regardless of how many storms we get, you know, you want to be prepared the same for every hurricane season because it just takes that one storm near you to make it a very, very active season. And, you know, in general, most years, for your one particular town, the odds of you getting hit by a major hurricane is low, but it's certainly not zero. And obviously, you know, any one of those years, that could be the year that, that it impacts you, you directly. So even if we don't have anything um, this year, even though we likely will. Just stay prepared. Stay prepared all throughout the year, especially during these, these uh, months where we're especially vulnerable to it during hurricane season. Um, but thank you for talking to us about preparedness. 
Uh, we definitely need to be prepared this year and in any coming years, because um, even if it's low potential, you might get hit. You might be regretting it. If you don't prepare, this is the time. Thank you. Thank you.